I want to just share with you a word that the Lord has placed in my spirit. He keeps nudging me to share this with someone. It's not for everyone. It's very specific, uh, meaning it's for someone who feels like they are in a drought of a season, meaning everything in their life is dead. What was once working is no longer working now. And it's not because... It's not because you don't think God's faithful. You have experienced God's love and mercy and favor in the past. You've experienced him coming through for you so many times before. So it's not you questioning his character, but you're asking God, what's going on? What are you doing? What am I doing wrong? Am I doing something really wrong? Are you punishing me? God is not punishing you. He is doing something new and we should get excited about it. He shared with me this morning, Isaiah. Uh, it's a verse in Isaiah. It's uh, 43, 18. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, uh, share it with you really quickly. Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So the Lord is saying, I'm doing a new thing. And that's why everything has dried up. Shall you not perceive it? Some versions say perceive. Some say, uh, shall you not know it? And he's trying to get your attention because he's saying it's time to pivot, change directions. Uh, What he's been dropping in my spirit the past few days is he keeps saying, come about, come about. And he knows I love sailing uh, in the ocean. And come about is a term that sailors use when their boat is completely dead in the water, meaning it is no longer moving. The wind is no longer favoring them. And so in order to go with the wind, uh, they have to change their sail from one side to the other, make that pivotal move uh, so that they can pick back up that momentum. And so some of you might feel like you're on this boat. The heat is just beating down on you. Uh, You're feeling the heat intensify and your circumstances are getting worse and worse and you cannot figure out how to get this boat to move. You have worked and worked and worked. You've sought the Lord with your whole heart. You have emptied yourself through prayer and fasting and you are wondering when or if God is even going to come through this go around. And so uh, if this is you, I I want to bring you into Ezekiel, the Valley of the Dry Bones. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, I'm just going to uh, give you a little synopsis, but I believe it's Ezekiel 37. I'll put it in the description below or in this video somewhere uh, so that you can go read it. But basically, Jesus uses Ezekiel, a prophet. He brings him into this valley of skeletons, an army of skeletons, and he gives Ezekiel a command to prophesy over these skeletons so that they may grow flesh and tendons and ligaments, basically form bodies. And so um, the second time he asked Ezekiel to prophesy to the breast so that these bodies would have life. And so when that happens, a four winds comes through and completely resurrects these dead bodies in this valley all to demonstrate God's power and God's glory. And so some of you might have more than one thing that is completely dead in your life. Some of you are experiencing multiple dead things to the point to where you're like, it's going to take a miracle. You know it's going to take a miracle for God to resurrect what is dead. And so um, you're, you're, you know, you're to the point to where you're questioning, God, am I going to live through this? I mean, you feel like you're going to drown at any given moment. And you're asking God, you're like, God, throw me a buoy or something. And God's saying, why would I throw you a buoy if I've given you the boat? Meaning I've given you the very tools and resources to keep your head above waters. And I've given you the compass, the guide, the Holy Spirit himself to navigate this boat. And he's behind that rudder. A rudder is what you steer a very small sailboat. He's behind the rudder saying, turn left, turn right. So I've given you the guide and I've given you the very thing that's keeping your head above waters. And I'm using that very thing as a means to usher you into the next season that I am calling you into. So you have what you need. This is not a matter of scarcity or or a matter of lack. But I am asking you to do this one thing 
that you have not followed through on. I'm asking, asking you to do this, take this one step. I'm asking you to obey, which reminds me of when in, in second john when jesus turns water into wine he brings his disciples to this wedding banquet they run out of wine and they panic and they're like well, what are we going to do and jesus uh gives these uh he gives his disciples the command to go and take these jars and fill these jars up to the brim with water so that he could perform a miracle right in front of them and that's exactly what happens and so uh these servants they don't question his authority they don't demand an explanation they don't ask him why they literally just submit themselves and and they do exactly what he tells them to do and it's a very simple task um it's, just, it's the equivalent to god asking us to go to the kitchen turn the faucet on fill up this cup to the brim and pass it along and so some of us think that when the lord gives us an instruction on one side of the spectrum um, we think that it's too trivial or that it's something that it's insignificant that god doesn't really pay attention to or care care about but god cares about the details he cares about the minor details and so on the other spectrum, some of us think that the, the task at hand that God has given us is overcomplicated or too complex to complete. And so we, we disobey him. And he's not asking us to work tirelessly and to wear ourselves out. In fact, by doing so, we're only distracting ourselves from hearing the one simple instruction that he is nudging us to do and so he's not calling us to work harder god's saying i'm not calling you to strive i'm calling you to obey for obedience is better than sacrifice you and so if this is you if everything is dry and desolate and and you think that god is punishing you god has not punished you he is not punishing you he is not forsaking you in fact it's the very opposite God wants to bring you into the new season that he has prepared and equipped you all of these years. He wants to bring you into something new because he never intended to keep you where you are. Where you are now was training ground. And so this new season of life that he wants to bring you into is a season that's going to bring him more honor and more glory. And so this is not a time to panic and to cry. This is a time to rejoice and get excited for the new thing that he is birthing in our life. And so this is a time to submit to his lordship over our life, to submit to his will and to obey because it's that one step of obedience that is going to activate the miracle that we are waiting on him to perform very much like at that wedding banquet it's the very thing that is going to activate that gust of wind that we're waiting to breathe life back into the dry barren places of our life that wind that we need to carry this boat to that destination that god is calling us into but it requires one pivotal move very much like coming about on a sailboat and thank you holy spirit he's he's given me a a memory a vision of me being on a sailboat with my brothers at a very young age and my favorite part y'all was coming about because it meant not only were we going to go really fast book it through the water but it also meant most of the time that the sailboat would tilt up on its side is what they call uh, healing I think that's what it's called and so when that would happen we would hang off the side and feel the water on our backs and on our legs and it, I just remember the thrill and the joy that came with healing onto the side of the sailboat and so uh, the Lord is is saying I want you to experience the same thrill the same joy and excitement that comes with flowing with the Holy Spirit into the direction that God is calling you into. I'm hearing gone with the wind. God wants you to go with the wind. Go with the Holy Spirit. Because it's then, it's in that season, in that pathway where you are going to experience an overflow, the anointing of the Lord in your life, the favor of God. And in this wind tunnel with the holy spirit 
is when God is going to do something so miraculous that you have never witnessed before and that it's not just about your joy and your uh, excitement and, and benefits, but it is to win souls for his kingdom. So if this encouraged you, if this is for you, if you are someone who is in that dry season, I want you to comment down below, gone with the wind. And then lean in to the Holy Spirit and ask him for a revelation, that minor detail that you have overlooked or you have brushed to the side and then go and obey. Okay? We've got to get excited. God's doing something new in our lives. All right, I hope this blessed you. If it has, be sure to stay tuned because the Lord is speaking. All right? All right, talk soon.